Welcome to a review on the LG made Google Nexus 5. Let's find out if it stands up to other flagship smartphones. We'll turn around to the back first. You can't get inside of the phone which is standard for Nexus devices so there is no replaceable battery. The battery itself is 2300 milliamps, which isn't that big but testing shows that it's a little disappointing with the phone only just managing the day with medium usage. Charging the battery can be done via a micro USB charger which you can find at the bottom but you can also charge the device without the need of wires. I tested out wireless charging with my Qi charger which you can buy separately. I have to admit wireless charging is awesome and it's easy to use but you have to bear in mind that charging speeds are considerably slower than by wire. My test took around 8 hours to fully charge the phone using wireless charging. Underneath the back you'll find the usual array of hardware which includes an accelerometer, gyroscope, NFC, compass and a GPS. You can't expand storage so it's important to choose between the 16 and 32 gig versions correctly. You'll also find a notification light on the front too. The rear facing camera is 8 megapixels. The camera is great especially because of the optical image stabilisation which ensures that every image you take is crystal clear. The only downside of the camera has nothing to do with its specs at all but it is to do with its software. The image it takes maybe don't look as dynamic or as contrasty as I'd hoped for and this is because of the built in camera application which is just a little bit dull for my liking. You could fix this easily with a third party app you can find on the app store. On the front of the device you will see the front facing camera which is pretty standard 1.3 megapixels. The Nexus 5 has a 5 inch full HD display which is rather nice. This means it has a high pixel density so you won't be able to distinguish any of those pixels. Couple this with the powerful quad core chip and the 2GB of RAM, gaming is as smooth as it'll ever be. While I was messing around with gaming, there was one thing that did bug me. You may have noticed the lack of physical buttons. There is only a lock button and volume controls. The navigation controls are software based so when you move around the device, they're on a screen. Most of the time this is good and the controls feel part of the experience. But when testing some games and other full screen apps, the controls don't disappear, which is so annoying when playing. Moving on to software, because this is the Nexus device, you'll be sure that it was the latest and greatest software from Google. There isn't really any pre-installed applications here, so if you want any extra functionality you're going to have to get it from the App Store. If I'm going to talk about software though, I have to talk about Google Now, which is absolutely amazing. With the latest update, it's just a swipe away. I've set it to give me weather and sport updates as well as the latest news. It's such a brilliant piece of software and I definitely recommend to turn it on if you get a Nexus 5. Navigating on the phone is smooth but the UI, mainly icons are just so huge. The high DPI means that buttons and icons look so bloated. This really annoyed me because it looks so ugly. Fortunately there are solutions. With this being a Nexus device it's one of the easiest devices to root. If you do decide to root the phone, you have access to hundreds of ROMs which you can install to change how the phone behaves and looks. The Nexus 5 doesn't have any silly features like a fingerprint sensor or a 3D camera. It's a no frills, no nonsense phone, but a brilliant phone at that. It's hard to fault the device because there isn't really anything wrong with it. It's easy to recommend a Nexus device, especially because of its price tag. Thanks for watching.